Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. This is from the CBN. I'm Uliye Misidada. Economic empowerment involves both the ability to succeed and advance financially and the power to make and act on economic decisions. The people focused Central Bank of Nigeria is passionate about economic empowerment through employment generation for the teeming youth population and has over the years demonstrated this through its various intervention initiatives targeted at making credit easily accessible to young entrepreneurs. Today on the program, we'll highlight some of these initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria, what people on the street think about youth empowerment, and as well bring to you more testimonies of recent beneficiaries of the CBN loan schemes. You might find one of the initiatives beneficial to you or someone you know, so I urge you to stay tuned. But first, let's quickly bring you up to speed on the top stories from the Central Bank of Nigeria this week. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godune Mefiele, has responded to the question of whether or not the Apex Bank printed money to augment funds from the Federation Account Allocation Committee distributed to states and the Federal Capital Territory in March. Mr. Mefiele, who spoke during a facility tour of the Dangote Integrated Sugar Complex in Narasarawa State yesterday, expressed dismay over attempts to distort legitimate financial concepts of currency printing. If you understand the concept of printing of money, printing of money is about lending money, right? That is our job, right? To print, to print is about saying lending money. So there's no need uh, putting all the controversy about printing of money as if we're going into the factory printing there and then distributing on the street. It is very inappropriate for people to just to just call, give some coloration to the word printing of money as if it is it is um, it is some foreign this foreign word coming from the sky. Okay, so I, I think. Um, it's important for me to put it this way, that in 2015, 2016, the kind of situations we find ourselves now, which is even worse than what we faced in 2015, 2016, we did provide budget support facility for all the states of this country. That loan remains unpaid till now, and we are going to insist on the states paying back those monies going forward. Since they are accusing us of um, giving them loans, that's what effective, that's what they're saying. And um, so, um, most countries in the world today are confronted by not only health challenges coming from the pandemic of COVID and also economic crisis and the rest of them. And what I keep saying is it will be irresponsible for the Central Bank of Nigeria or any central bank or any Fed to stand idle and then refuse to support its government at this time. And what is being done, right, is being done is being done in any climb. And at the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting, I did say, I, and I gave data about what is being done, even in developed economies, about what needs to be done to shore up their economy and take them out <coughs> of the recession. Nigeria is unfortunately in a very bad situation. I'm not going to pretend about it, in the sense that we are facing um, problem about productivity output, which is GDP. Luckily, we managed to, to just come out of it with a hair's breadth. And we are working very hard to see how we can not only have our head above water, but get our, our, our waist above water. That is what we are focused on right now. And of course, we are also confronted by issues of inflation and prices and the rest of them. CBN Governor Mr. Godine Mefiele has also disclosed that wheat and sugar are to be added to the list of items for which foreign exchange is restricted in line with efforts of the government at conserving reserves and promoting local production that can lead to massive employment generation. Mr. Mefile told journalists during his visit to the 60,000 hectares Dangote sugar plantation in Nasarawa State Thursday that the project is consistent with the government's backward integration blueprint in producing various consumables in the country. Right now, the Central Bank of Nigeria spends close to between 600 to 1 billion dollars, 600 million to 1 billion dollars importing sugar into the country. And that is a humongous sum of money. And in line with the, the, the uh, pronouncement of the Mr. President that there's a need for us to begin to think about producing what we can eat or eat or feed on what we can produce, it's about diversifying the base of the Nigerian economy. And so and we're saying that if Nigeria can produce sugar and be self-sufficient in food production, that this should be something that we should support. And that's the reason why we have decided to come today to give credence to 
the backward integration program of the federal government and we are ready to give the support. Land has been provided. You've gone round. You've seen that the, the, this location is well suited for this project and uh, some of the primary equipment are already here beginning from the plantation, sugar plantation, into, into the importation of the equipment that is needed for the manufacturing and all, all the processing. So we would provide not only the Naira or some of the Naira because I know that Dan Gute himself as um, a big man in Nigeria, he has equity that is contributing to the project. We would also leverage by providing some funding for this project in Naira and of course he needs dollar to import the equipment that will keep this project running Hopefully in the next two years we'll provide that support. Okay. So that is our interest here because it will reduce um, it will reduce the uh, uh, reliance on importation uh, on foreign on forex. And let me see the point to say this: that we are looking at sugar, we are looking at wheat. We started a program on milk about two years ago. Eventually, this product would go into our FX restriction list. We would just want to see to what extent we see. Um, the traction that is coming on from those who are currently importing these items and we are putting their feet on fire to say that we all must work together to produce these, these goods in Nigeria rather than import them. As part of efforts to promote a safe and sound financial system in Nigeria, the CBN has started the enrollment of other financial institutions OFIs on the Credit Risk Management System CRMS platform. A circular released by the Director of Financial Policy and Regulation Department, Mr. Kevin Amugel, last Thursday stated that all development finance institutions, microfinance banks, primary mortgage banks, and finance companies are to report all credit facilities, both principal and interest, to the CRMS and update same on a monthly basis. To ensure full compliance, OFIs are to conclude the tagging of all live credit files for all individual and non-individual borrowers with BVN and TIN respectively by May the 14th. The CBN had introduced the CRMS to improve credit risk management in commercial, merchant and non-interest banks and to also prevent predatory borrowers from undermining the banking system. Nigeria is a rich nation of green land, rich resources, countless crops and commodities sufficient to feed and provide a means of livelihood for her teeming population. Chin up Nigeria, the giant of Africa, exciting times are here. We can be self-reliant and grow our economy if we work together to explore our potential. It takes a whole nation. Let us get involved. Buy Nigerian to grow Nigeria. Welcome back. The Central Bank of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Bankers Committee, two years ago introduced the Creative Industry Financing Initiative, CIFI, otherwise known as SIFI, to improve access to long-term, low-cost financing for entrepreneurs and investors in the Nigerian creative and information technology subsectors as part of efforts to boost job creation in the country, particularly among the youth. The SIFI is just one out of the several other financial intervention initiatives of the CBN meant to empower the Nigerian youth economically. CBN Governor Mr. Godwini Mifiele spoke further on this during the press briefing at the last MPC meeting in March. Let me say that we are doing everything possible to put in place policies that benefit all Nigerians. All Nigerians. And CBN is very conscious of the fact that a youth population of between, I repeat, 18 to about 40, 45, constitute close to 60% of our population. And we are doing everything possible to ensure that we take them into account in all our policy decisions. The level of unemployment is regrettable. But I'm seeing everything is being done. And I give an example. I read 
how much we have granted in loans under our creative industry financial initiative, which is primarily for the youth. Almost close to about 3.5 billion naira has been disbursed. Our Axmis fund, right, is substantially being disbursed to people in this age. But I would imagine that Axmis, Axmis fund, where we have disbursed almost close to about 150 billion naira, has been disbursed to nothing less than 60% of the people in this bracket. Three, only recently, like I said, the, the president gave approval for the repositioning, rebuilding, and renewal of National Arts Theatre. Aside from, aside from renewing and repositioning National Arts Theatre, four economic hubs are to be built around the National Arts Theatre for movie, for music, for fashion design, and for ICT software development. These projects, which will be a total urban renewal for Lagos, and after being completed, will go to will, another one will be established somewhere in the north, another one in the south east south south area. It's going to be costing the bankers committee, bankers committee, not the government, not the CBN, over 40 billion naira. And this is meant to help stimulate the entrepreneurial skills of our youth, improve the tourism capacity of our country so that our youth can enjoy Nigeria. With efforts being made to secure our land, our youth will be able to move around and do their business. That is what we are doing. Thanks for staying tuned. Youth Empowerment aims to improve quality of life through processes that enable participation, enhance control through shared decision making, and create opportunities to learn, practice, and increase skills. Economic empowerment is a dimension of youth empowerment which teaches entrepreneurial skills, provides access to finance for entrepreneurs, and wealth creation, among other things. But what do Nigerians think about youth empowerment? Let's find out. I believe government by engaging the youth with other employment or giving them empowerment on training on work to to be able to engage them in one way or the other so that they won't be idle in the streets. Equipping our youths okay. or stretching the youth in order to do what they will have to do to survive or to earn their livings. That's all I can say about youth empowerment. Youth empowerment is a thing that, that the government can actually not overemphasize or overlooked into in our society today. And we, we know there are thousand, thousand and one youth out there today who are actually looking for a job or wanting to do. But with this empowerment, not just, a mil, not just millions or other, but a little can actually go a very long way. Okay, what I understand by youth empowerment is youth acquiring skills from friends organizations a youth is the powerhouse of every society and any nation or society that neglect the power of the youth at their prime age will not have for sure we know what it means when you talk of youth they are the people that hold the nation in future but when you now look at the situation in Nigeria or in many of Africa countries the youth have been neglected and that is the the outcome of it is what we are seeing now most especially the crisis here and there all over that the country Nigeria faces now the youth supposed to be empowered when you empower you today it means that you are ensuring you are giving a secure future for a society you are giving a secure future for a nation tomorrow youth empowerment actually means each youth having a skill or something they actually love to do and then the government comes in to actually 
help them get to where they want to get to, like someone who wants to go into fashion designing and um, does not have the 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 ability or the all the 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 cash to actually go into governments can come in from there and like you want to go into fashion designing what do you need a sewing machine a shop where and that's empower the youth thereby we can reduce most of this robbery on the streets or prostitution going on around youth empowerment is a is a program where you create awareness for you and a kata for their needs. Youth. Many of us we are suffering in this Nigeria. I can't lie. Yes. How are we going to the promised land? Uh, I don't know. I'm empowering the youth by setting up maybe a business organization for them to build up their self. Uh, youth empowerment, by my own understanding, is the ability to get the youth, the youth of Nigeria, most especially, to do one thing or the other in order to live comfortably. So actually, in order to do this, it may not necessarily mean education per se, but it may mean uh, there are some of them that are actually educated, like the graduates now. I do make them to do their work, apart from relying on the certificates. Because what we know now in Nigeria, the certificates are not... Uh, the job available is far less than the certificate in the hands of the students or the graduates. As a result, we have to do something extra or do something more for them to be able to work independently. To my own level, what I, what I can say about the youth empowerment is, you know, by what uh, the study in school, maybe they can uh, help them with, with it. Then I should talk about the local working. Maybe you learn work somewhere. If government wants to help you, they can help you with the equipment you needed to use. Uh, I believe that the government has thus far helped the youth in diverse ways in empowering them. Uh, and presently, I know of a program that the government, the Lagos State government, uh, is, has a back on since last year uh, in order to empower youth, uh, which has to do with a uh, graduate internship program. What I, as an individual, understand by youth empowerment is when our, our youth, like let's say from 18 years old to like the age of 35, uh, give you the opportunity to showcase what they've got, their potentials. It can be in any uh, area. Then when they are given the um, able environment, the environment is able, capable, and so the environment is, able, uh, is okay for them. And then they are given the right things, um, morally, financially, everything is okay for them. Then whatever they want to showcase, you know, we give them the go ahead. Employment, one. Although they cannot, they cannot employ all the youth 100%, but at least it will go a long way. There are lots of ways. There's no, it's not me that is going to suggest. The government knows it, and that is what the repercussions they are reaping from it now for failing to equip and to empower the youth. The youth can be empowered in so, in so many ways. We have, like now, we're, we're talking about this um, dispatch rider thing of a thing. You know, it's kind of helping mostly people now you know now we do online business people want to deliver goods even without the buyer coming to the store by giving us orientation on everything you know most times we graduates or the graduates i'm not a graduate yet. most times when they leave school there is actually no employment so the better way is the government giving us orientation on everything so we can know the ones to go for there are many ways that the youth can be empowered. When we are talking of empowerment, we have social empowerment, we have economic empowerment, we have educational empowerment, we have political empowerment. Empowerment goes just like that, that the youth should be involved in activities. And sometimes ago, I think there is an agitation that not too young 
to 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 uh, 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 occupy position of authority, most especially political power in Nigeria, and we thank our president that he signed the bill. But sincerely speaking, looking at the recycling system that characterizes our politics politics in Nigeria, are, are the leaders providing opportunity for youth? If the government can focus more on youths and take them more seriously, because. We've been hearing this saying right from childhood growing up, youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Yes, the youths are not leading in anything. I think uh, it's uh, it, individual, individual choices. So everybody knows the area of his own field. Everybody knows his area of discipline, where he can perform. So I think it's better to ask everyone his own discipline so that to avoid a, to avoid a strongly or uh, sent back. Oh, what I think is, you see, some of us cannot reach the governor's house. But in the local government level, if they can try at local government levels, so that a council chairman, councillorship, uh, reps, assembly for their constituencies. So that that may help the youth. I think by setting up an organization, maybe where they can learn, maybe like air making, fashion designing, and some others like computer training, and some others. What I think is that they should describe the youth as people of age 18 to 40, for example. If that is exactly the decision what I'm trying to say, then the first thing is you have to get a list or you have to have a data of those that will be empowered. This national education number, when you have it, they can upgrade it to know the youth who are employed and the ones that are not employed. The ones that are not employed, they can just make a form or if a form, they should fill the form, I graduated so so and so year, and up to now I'm not employed. Or I'm not a graduate, I left, I'm so sad, all this. When you have this, because when you don't have anything to do now, you can be, you will be free to go do anything, organism, courtesan, all this. So as a result, when the government, when they are ready to assist the youth, you bring the names. Yeah, now everybody is computer literate. In your phone, you can just feel, I'm so so and so age. And by God's great, I want so so and so employment or so so and so job. I suggest maybe, you know, uh, the population is somehow um, many now, so, but if you want to help the youth, maybe they can start from uh, the local area by. Uh, the uh, local government, um, the council or councillor, so that it will bring the youth that is in the area. So maybe you can start from there, you can help them. So I believe in my own best thoughts that the government can empower the youth by going through the local government. I believe they are the ones that we know, they are the last face to the youth, to everybody. Wow, different views expressed, questions and misconceptions raised there by respondents, which we will attempt to address in this episode and subsequent episodes of the program. Let's begin by highlighting the intervention schemes of the Central Bank of Nigeria targeted at the youth. The broad policy deliverables of the CBN interventions are categorized into job creation, access to finance, economic diversification and inclusive growth. Some of the interventions are Agribusiness SME Investment Scheme, AGSMIS, Targeted Credit Facility, TCF, Micro Small and Medium Enterprises Development Fund, MSME, DF, Creative Industry Financing Initiative, SciFi, Solar Energy Adoption Financing Facility, SEAFF, SME Credit Guarantee Scheme, SME, CGS. Accelerated Agricultural Development Scheme, AADS. COVID-19 Intervention Facility for the Manufacturing Sector, CIFMS. Healthcare Sector Intervention Facility, HSIF. Healthcare Sector Research and Development Intervention Grants Scheme, HSRDIS. Agricultural Credit Guarantee Scheme, ACGS. And the CBN-funded Nigeria Youth Investment Fund, NYIF. These schemes are open to young people engaged in businesses across the agricultural value chain, manufacturing, 
service sector, healthcare sector, creative industry comprising movie, music, fashion and ICT among others. The schemes are available on non-interest basis also for those whose religious beliefs go against interest-based banking. Interest rate for all the facilities have been reduced to 5% up to February the 28th, 2022. And you do not have to know anybody in government or any of the participating financial institutions to benefit from the schemes as long as you are eligible. That's our package from the CBN this week. Log on to the website of the Central Bank of Nigeria at www.cbn.gov.ng to find out more about the people-oriented initiatives of the Apex Bank, especially those that we have just told you about, and talk to any of the participating financial institutions on how to take part and benefit from the schemes. Call the CBN Contact Center using the phone line below for your valid complaints. Remember, local courage may apply. Send in your comments and contributions to the email address from the CBN at gmail.com and follow us on the social media for updates and uploaded episodes of the program. I'm William Isidada. Stay safe. Bye for now.